Andrew Dix. This is a Neil 9000 series CD interview recorder. Now you've probably come across Neil's equipment without realising it. You may have crossed paths with a Neil recorder as part of what you do for a living, one way or another. What you in for? Got caught. Got the picture? If you've watched a police interview on TV, then you may well have seen and heard a Neil recorder. Here's the traditional tape-based one in Season 1 of Line of Duty. And yes, that's a mirror image due to a continuity error when filming. By Season 6, AC-12 had splashed out on a CD-based model. The one here is a portable triple CD recorder. The same interview is recorded onto three CDs simultaneously, so copies can be kept by the interviewer, the interviewee, the representative, whatever. The reason it's landed on my desk is the reason many things land on my desk. It's not working properly. It'll start off fine, but when it's warmed up, the screen starts to flicker slightly if it's doing something which demands more power, like spinning up the CD motors. When it starts doing that, it doesn't take much for it to actually reboot unexpectedly. I'm hoping it's an easy fix. A dried out capacitor causing poor regulation that's easy to get at and swap out? That'd be nice. Let's find out. Quick tour around the outside first. On the front, we've got three slot loading CD drives, and for it to record, all three slots need a blank disc. It won't record just one or two. Below these, there's a display showing what's going on, controls for record, stop and eject, some LEDs indicating volume level from the microphones, and a power button. Around the back of the bag, which the recorder is actually screwed to, are connections for the two external microphones, a DC inlet jack for power, and an Ethercon locking RJ45 connector, which gets no mention in the user manual. Flipping it over, we have the screws which hold the recorder to its bag. With those removed, we can slip the recorder out of the bag. Now let's look inside. Inside what we basically have is a small form factor PC. The three drives here are actually DVD writers rather than just CD writers, with SATA cables going down to the motherboard off the top two, and power to this board here. As the board only has two SATA ports, the bottom one instead has a USB to SATA adapter connected to a USB header on the motherboard. Around here we have our battery, which is an 11 cell nickel metal hydride pack, and a Jetway NF92 motherboard. There's that USB connection from the bottommost drive. The connection which looked like an Ethernet port on the back is an Ethernet port. That's the jack inside extended through to the outside. Presumably it's booted from this USB stick. This is the side I'm interested in, as I suspect there's a problem with the supply rails here, where it's getting heavily loaded and causing it to fail. But where? Let's figure out what these boards do first. OK, a few minutes of poking around which I've chopped out, and here we go. We have 9 in volts coming in here, which goes through this coil. I don't think it touches down on the board apart from between the coil wires and the DC jack. And then it comes straight out to the front side board. This lot looks like it's a 12 volt bus for various things. And this is 5 volts for various things. So 19 volts comes in here. This is the connection for the battery. This is another connection for the battery, presumably for temperature monitoring. This is the power supply button from the front. And this is the power supply button for the motherboard. So when you press this button, it will wake this board up, and this board will wake that board up. This is another USB cable going down to the main board, and that then leaves this one, which is marked PCPSU, and goes to the next board along, presumably at 19 volts. Yep. And 15 volts if it's on battery. This board has a connection here which is marked as PC 12 volt in, which actually goes to what is a 12 volt input jack at the other side of the motherboard. It's also got this one which is marked as PC 12 volt out, which connects to there, and also has PL3, which I think is the 5 volt connection around there. I've tested this with that 12 volt cable pulled out, and the 5 volt rail disappears. So this is using the 12 volt supply that's passed right through the motherboard and back out again. So where is the problem? Does the PC itself reboot? Or is it just this board rebooting? If the PC is rebooting, there's a problem with the 12 volt input being dragged down by the 5 volt regulator that's feeding the CD drives. This board at the front is probably going to generate its own power rails. Well, that's disappointing. It's not actually misbehaving now. 
Since the lid's been off and I've wiggled a few connections, it's been fine. I've tried enclosing it with that for it to try and warm back up as though the lid was back on. It's made no difference. So it may have just been a dicky connection. As you can see, if I give it a load of discs now, it's not flickering or anything. It's not rebooting. I left the screen connected so I could see that if this restarted, if the whole thing was restarting. But it seems absolutely fine. Right. The lid's back on. All that's left to do now is to test if it can record without crashing. This will also let us test the recording quality. In fact, you've already heard the recording quality. After recording the earlier segments, I wrote a transcript to dictate into the machine. And most of what you've heard in this video has been the soundtrack from that. Well, hopefully. I'm not actually recorded it yet. That's coming straight after this. Thanks for watching. Who it is? This is a new 9000